So here is the finished work on the motors and the ESCs. And I do want to show you, just so you can see for yourself, uh, what I did with the ESCs relate to the arm thickness. So here's my handy dandy caliper. Um, this is a fantastic caliber caliper. It's like, f I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks, which is a lot of money for, but for a ruler, but not for a caliper. And it's got absolute origin and it's like, I'll put a link to it in the video description. It's it's a fantastic caliper for 40 bucks. Uh, I'll tell you what. But here, check this out. So the arm is four millimeters of, and with the ESC, it is <laughs> 10 millimeters. So I, um, yeah. 9.3 9 millimeters. So, yeah, I, uh, the complaint that I am I'm hurting the aerodynamics of this wonderful frame, which is one of the whole freaking selling points, it has some merit. But it is what it is. We're going to build it and fly it, and we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, <laughs> I've got the ESCs all mounted, uh, taped up, all wired up. There's one more test that I need to do, and that is I just want to do my safety check to make sure I didn't screw up the wiring because I'm not using the right colors. And I'm going to do that by, um, first I'm just going to check for continuity, positive to negative. No, none. Good. That's what I want. I don't want continu continuity. And then I'm going to hit the positive. And I think that actually, I haven't really thought this through, but I think that actually shows that I did it right because if I had got any positive wire on a negative pad or vice versa, then I think I would have the continuity. Yeah, I think the lack of continuity positive to negative proves that I didn't wire any of them up wrong. There's only one way to find out for sure. That's to plug in a battery. And here is my handy dandy smoke stopper, which build one of these. Build a smoke stopper. Go Google it. Stop watching this video right now and go Google. Let's see if the the uh, the fire comes out. Here we go. That's good. No smoke came out of any of the ESCs. Okay, that that's a little weird, but no smoke came out of any of the ESCs. So I think we're okay. Um, I also, oops, was not supposed to power up the flight controller without an antenna on the, uh, yeah, on the connector. So, oops, uh, but hey. Um, uh, speaking of the antenna connector, one of the things that's great about this flight controller, and I hope we see more video transmitters doing this, is the MMCX connector. This little fella here is an MMCX connector, and it is... An RF connector, just like an SMA connector, RPSMA, or the famous IPEX connector, which is used on so many of these little guys. This here is the Furious FPV Stealth. There's an IPEX connector. Of course, it's used on the Unify. I was I was having a conversation with some folks the other day, and was the Unify the first FPV video transmitter to use an IPEX connector? Did they all use SMA before that? Put it down in the comments if you have an if you can think of one before the Unify. I always like to give credit where credit is due. Uh, and I, th I think the Unify was the first. They made it popular, but it's okay for uh, your, for your receiver antennas. But it's kind of junk for a little uh, for a heavier wire like this, and that's why I think MMCX is so good. So it's just a little bit bigger and a little bit sturdier, and you can see it's got a nice mating surface. Ooh, mating surface, <laughs> and it just pops right in there. But you can see the way it goes in. It's it's very, it's very secure, and there we go. Once it's fully engaged, it's quite secure. It's it's a very good connector, but there's a downside, and the downside is it can be hard to find these pigtails. It's easy to get an MMCX to SMA pigtail, but they're typically like you know, twenty centimeters, you know, eight, ten, twelve inches, which is way more than you want. It, there aren't very many sources of these, these little two or three inch connectors uh, with MMCX. So I also, I hope that we'll see more vendors making aftermarket versions of these because right now, if you damage this, 
it's pretty hard to find a replacement. I, I've done some searching. I think there's one or two stores that's selling them, but not very many. Whereas you can get an Ipex pigtail all over the place. So let's just uh, do the right thing in case I make this stupid mistake again. And let's put, oh, here we go. So this is a 50 ohm uh, terminator, a 50 ohm. And it, it will, it's like a dummy load is another thing you can call it. And if we screw it on here, it's basically just a resistor, but it will keep the video transmitter from damaging itself if we power it up again. Also, if you guys ever are at a race or something, and you, have, for some reason, need to power up your video transmitter, or you plug in. Maybe you want to plug in your copter. And you don't want to. You don't want to unplug your video transmitter. You can put one of these on there, and it will absolutely prevent it from transmitting at all. So this is a handy thing to have around. Now I have to give credit to HGLRC. They provide you with not only all the little connectors you could need. Sadly, they are not silicon wire. Everybody use silicon wire. Silicon wire is is so much better than this plastic stuff. Um, but hey, what are you going to do? So they got the connectors here. That's good. And they even have a handy dandy pinout diagram that you can use. And that is really nice. So we can study that pinout diagram and figure out where the, the uh, pins we're going to need are going to go. And, um, if you need instructions on how to study a pinout diagram and figure out what pins go where, I've got a playlist which is flight controller wiring for beginners which goes through the whole process of the common connections on flight controllers and, and how to recognize that in the pinout diagram and all that stuff so you can check that out if you don't feel comfortable with that. And looking closely here we can see this is where our receiver is going to go and I'm super annoyed right now because this is the underside of the board but of course I've installed it and I'm looking at the top of the board. So now I have to figure out which one is where. And the pins are going to be upside down too. That's super annoying. Obviously, this is how you're going to install the board. So, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. So here I've removed the wires from the header that I'm not going to use. Um, you can also just snip them off or you can lift this little... Uh, tab here and pull them out. You can see I've done a little bit of damage to the header in, in uh, doing that. That's your call. Uh, one of the things that's annoying to me about boards like this, I said the same thing in my review of the Asgard and they fixed it. Uh, it whenever you have a flight controller or other board that has these custom headers, you, I would prefer that manufacturers always provide you a solder pad as a backup. And I, I don't think that's the case here. I'm pretty sure I didn't see any solder pads on the underside of the board. The reason that's nice is, well, number one, some people just prefer to direct solder, so fine. But number two, finding spare parts can be a real hassle. The receiver for this build is going to be the XM Plus, and one of the things that I don't like about the XM Plus is that it has this, this section of the antenna here, which is the actual radiating element, is I think it's something like 28 millimeters long. It's about a fifth of a wavelength, and that is a worse ratio than a standard antenna is a quarter wavelength. So here's the fix. Um, and the fix is to strip this back. And you might say, well, how can I strip it back accurately? <sighs> See? Stupid. Look, now I just fucking ripped it off. I hate this thin coax that they've started using. It is way too fragile. You see, I just ripped it with my bare hands. How are you supposed to work with that? I don't know, and I don't like it. <laughs> so, so dumb. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, the heck with that. I'm going to pull these off like so, and I'm going to throw them in the garbage where they belong. I'm going to just get a spare antenna and put it the heck back on there with the correct length and never think about that again. What a joke. Why would you do that? I don't know why you would sell it with a yes, tiny antennas like that. It's ridiculous. Now that it is all wired up and I've tested that it powers up correctly, I'm going to wrap it, the receiver, in this stuff is called Captain Tape. Um, Captain Tape is an electrical insulating tape. Uh, one of the characteristics that it has is that it's tolerant to heat, which of course is not an issue here, but um, it's also uh, it's translucent. You can see through it. So I like it for receivers. 
because it means that I can still see the LEDs and I can still get at the button easily. Seems like this um, feeds the camera 5 volts only, which, given that the 5 volts is only 4.88 volts, is a little bit sketchy. Uh, I would certainly like the option to feed the camera VBAT, maybe via a solder bridge or just by putting VBAT in the pin header, and then you can pick which wire you choose. Um, basically, all the cameras that we're using these days support battery voltage, so there's, I think, little reason not to use it, especially if you're not going to freaking put a rock solid 5 volt regulator on the board, HGLRC. Now this wire coming off the Foxeer here is nice silicone wire. I'm not I'm not sure whether Foxeer ships with silicone wire or not, whether this is just a spare header that I had that happens to work, but look how nice this is to work with. Watch this. And not only is it just nice and soft and flexible and strips so easily. Oh, and the most important thing about silicone insulation is it's heat tolerant it will not just melt and shrink back like the uh, plastic one will I really hate having to do splices like this they're just so ugly on a nice clean build they're so ugly people who are being like yeah well you put a you didn't use a four in one ESC mr. nice clean build oh shut up <laughs> It's a, another reason why I prefer solder pads. Or, as Moto did with the Tornado, or the Typhoon rather, uh, just to, you can buy pre-made jumpers that, that fit the board and that go directly to the camera. Okay. Now we should have a camera, and uh, I think that's the build. And that's the beauty of the HGLRC is that there's that's just it, right? But yeah, uh, camera, receiver, video transmitter. That's the build. Well, that was that was easy. So let's see if in fact we are powered up and transmitting. Yeah, it's working. It's working. There you go. Well, that is going to finish the build, as near as I can tell. Let me put it all together for you so you can see it in its finished trim. And then, of course, I have to set it up. And I have a video out right now uh, how to set up the Ultimate Configuration Guide to Betaflight 3.2 to take you through the whole setup. Uh, and um, then... Of course, we're going to need to do a maiden and fly it, and that'll come in future weeks on the channel, but that is going to close out this build. Let me put it together, show you what it looks like in the end, and then uh, I'll say goodbye.